And so next I'll talk about sustainable solanaceous disease management in the home vegetable garden. Um, and sprinkled throughout this presentation, there are photos of very common plant diseases, and so I hope you start to get exposure um, to these diseases. Here again is our IPM pyramid of tactics. We want to be focusing on these fundamental levels of disease management. Um, and then lastly, we'll talk about chemical management. So early in the season, in terms of solanaceous disease management, grower, growers and gardeners want to be thinking about sowing fungicide or heat-treated seed into pasteurized transplant media. Pasteurization is really easy to do in a home oven. Um, it's basically just, just moistening your transplant media and then heating it uniformly to about 145 Fahrenheit. Um, just a simple meat thermometer can do that for you. Um, and so you want to hold it at 145 for 30 minutes. And so that can eliminate some of these root rot pathogens, in particular pythium, um, that can cause some damping off symptoms in, in a number of different vegetable transplants. Um, again, a focus, a focus on resistant varieties will help eliminate the need for many of these downstream chemicals and downstream um, control measures. Transplanting at wider spaces, spacings, um, which is about three feet or more, um, will help improve airflow. Um, and so then the last point in terms of solanaceous crops, you can plant those pretty deeply. Um, tomatoes can be planted up to, up to the cotyledons. Um, they root out much better that way. Um, and then mulch is very important not only to maintain soil moisture and, and, and outcompete some of the weed pressure, um, but also reduce that soil splashing up to the foliage. Pathogens persist in soils overall. Um, and um, that can also help improve the organic matter in the garden soil. And so here are some common diseases of solanaceous crops down here on the left. Um, is bacterial spot of tomato, um, and you can see some of these enlarging tan lesions on the fruit there. That also goes to foliage. You'll see that one in the younger foliage before the older foliage. Um, Botrytis gray mold is more common in greenhouses or high tunnels, um, and that's, I kind of think of that one as, as the slice of pie type lesion on a leaf. Anthracnose on pepper, um, that's a pretty common fungal disease of pepper, that's a jalapeno. Um, and then up here is a less common one, tomato double streak virus. In general, viral diseases are, are fairly uncommon in the home garden. We tend to focus more on fungal and oomycete diseases as well as bacterial diseases. So it, in early and mid-season, the focus starts to shift to sanitation and cultural IPM. Um, so again, start with clean planting material, also clean trellis material. And so I don't recommend I don't recommend reusing or sanitizing wooden stakes, but for metal stakes, these cleaning methods are, are very effective. And again, that's just a simple 10% bleach solution with visibly clean metal stakes. Um, and so that can help eliminate some of the bacterial pathogens that can persist from year to year on those materials. Um, for home gardeners, um, I don't recommend this for commercial growers, but for home gardeners, I do recommend pinching old leaves that are infected with septoria or, or, or early blight. Those, those diseases are shown here on the right. Um, these are fungal diseases that generally start in the older foliage and kind of work their way up the plant, the plant architecture. And so by pinching these earlier in the season at the first notice of lesions, um, gardeners can eliminate that source of inoculum in their garden. Um, however, don't pinch the young leaves that are infected with bacteria because you'll just move it all through the garden. Um, so older leaves can be pinched, younger ones not so much. Um, and then finally, ensure adequate plant nutrition. Um, there are some connections between early blight and, and inadequate potassium nutrition, especially in those lower leaves. Um, and so by ensuring that plants are well nourished, um, in essence, a, a, an unstressed plant is one that is better able to resist um, pathogen infection. 
And so this is a photo of potassium deficiency in lower tomato leaves. They can even get kind of leathery. Um, and those leaves, overall, they're not contributing quite so much photosynthetically to the plant to the plant's general metabolism. They're not doing that much, you can just remove them. Um, and then here's bacterial spot on pepper. And I like this picture because you can see the lesions are associated with that leaf vein. Bacteria are moved in water um, and they're splashed from plant to plant in water. And you can see that that the xanthomonas pathogen there, um, it really took advantage of those water films because it infected just along the leaf veins there. Bacterial spot is the most common disease of pepper. Here are more bacterial diseases. Um, the focus here is tomato. And so up here in the upper right, you can see bacterial speck. Upper, oh, that was the upper left. The upper, the upper right, this is bacterial canker. And then down here is bacterial spot. So bacterial spec is, is generally those lesions are smaller and they can be, just be picked off with a fingernail. Um, bacterial canker, um, the lesions are larger and sometimes they call them bird's eye lesions because they have a lighter center and, and the margins are very distinct. They're that darker tan to brown with a light center. And then down here is bacterial spot. Those lesions seem to be a little bit more irregular and they can expand in kind of odd ways. Um, bacterial spot is probably the most common bacterial disease of tomato in the home garden. And some of the pathogens that cause bacterial spot of tomato can also go to pepper. And so again, that's why rotating, rotating to different plant families in different areas of the garden is very important. In mid-season, physical and mechanical and biological IPM becomes much more important. Um, so these are things like weeding the garden to improve airflow, eliminate those pathogen reservoirs, um, reduce the soil contact with the above ground plant parts. In general, the only, the only parts of the plant that should be coming in contact with the soil are the roots. Um, and so by using, by using compost in particular, Again, this compost helps, helps generate those good microbial communities that can compete against the pathogenic microbial communities that are just inherent in our environment. Um, plants should be staked firmly. Um, and what's really important is to adjust trellising with clean hands. And so um, in general, when, when, garden, when gardeners are working in their garden, they want to be starting at the cleanest part and ending at the dirtiest part. Um, this, is, this is true for weeds, as Sean mentioned, it's true for diseases. Um, it, just in general, you wanna start with the best and end at the worst, and clean your hands in between if you think you may have picked something up. Um, and then again, it's important to water plants at the soil line to reduce some of that, that foliar wetness. In mid, late, and post, in post-harvest situations, um, sanitation and chemistry becomes a little bit more important. Um, copper is a good tool for, for both bacterial and fungal diseases. Copper is really one of the only things that is effective against bacterial diseases, and I, I can't emphasize enough, coverage is very important with copper. Um, and so, and so gardeners want to be making sure that the leaf surfaces are well coated with that copper material because that's, that's generally a protectant. It needs to be there before the pathogen is splashed to that new, to that new tissue. Um, chlorothalonil and mancozeb um, are ideal for fungal and oomycete diseases. The organic options that folks have um, are really copper, sulfur, and the various hort oils. Um, Another, another important point is to harvest fruit carefully to avoid injuring plants. In general, a stressed plant is a susceptible plant. A stressed plant is one that is more easily infected by pathogens, um, and the pathogen can proliferate more quickly on a stressed plant. Um, at the end of the season, it's important to take disease plant debris off-site and don't compost those. Most home compost piles don't get hot enough to eliminate the harmful microbes. Um, and so by composting disease material, a gardener can introduce disease right back into their garden the next year. Um, and then finally, 
I'm a big fan of keeping a garden journal, keeping records, um, not only for not only for variety performance and how the season progressed, um, but also in terms of rotations in the garden. 